Do you love the Premier League? Because I know I do. And here at the Footy Culture, we are here to bless you with an exclusive discount from our friends at Fubo TV, where you can stream all the Premier League matches live in 4K. Do you love watching Hun Ming Sun, Bukai Osaka, Manchester United? All of that is available to stream exclusively here in Canada on Fubo TV. So hit our link in the bio for that exclusive offer. Now let's get into the action. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Footy Culture Podcast. We got a silly one for y'all today, but I'm joined with the usual suspects here. To my left on the couch, we got Spog, Matty Zinho, Zinho, and behind the cam, the man, solo cleanup crew, Dan. Wagwan. The purple Wagwan. guy. The purple guy. Wagwan. Yeah. Happy April Fool's, everyone. It's yes, uh, one of the most wonderful days of the year. And to kick that off, we have a cheeky, cheeky little game for y'all today. We each came hot with a fact. Fact or cap, we're going to spit it, and then we're going to have to guess if we're telling the truth or if we're capping. I already know this guy to my left is capping, so we're going to start off with him. All right. Let's hear it. Did you know Neymar <laughs> won right off the bat. Player of the Month or La Liga Player of the Month before Messi did? I think that's true because I remember like back then for whatever reason they would never give Messi player of the month awards. I don't know why. And I think I've seen that being posted before, so I'm gonna say that's that's fact. Yeah, the rest of you. I was on Twitter heavy during that time. And uh, yeah, I remember people talking about oh they would never give Messi player of the month. Although, like, it's a crazy stat. Like, Neymar came to Barca in 2013. Messi's been in La Liga since 2005. So, it's it sounds ridiculous. But, you know, I'm going to say cap. Okay, okay. Dan, James. Cap, fact. I think for me personally, it just seems like so wild that it has to be true. So you're true? So I'm going fact. Is it true? I said fact. Jay said cap. Um, I'll go true. I'll go true as well. All right. So. Survey says. Survey says. It is true. So ah. The only reason why was because it was introduced in 2013, the player of the month La Liga trophy. And Neymar won it in 2013. But Messi didn't end up winning it until January 2016. Actually? So, yeah. Three so years? It's actually kind of crazy. So, yeah, For whatever reason, they... Even like despite that, they still didn't want to give yeah. Messi Player of the Month award. Wow, man, it's weird. I'm keeping score here for all y'all. We're gonna see who gets the best score so by the end of it. Everyone got it right besides Jay, then. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously you don't get a score. Well, I don't point for that. Expect it better, bro. Yeah. Hey, I'm keeping things different around. Yeah. Here. <laughs> okay. Keeping <laughs> things wrong. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'll go next. Um. So you know how like we always see like during international break. There's always some kind of rule changes going on, whether it's like the blue card, whether it's, I saw, I saw one like the other day, brown card. Mm. So apparently now, UEFA are planning on scrapping penalty shootouts and instead deciding the tie on XG. So whichever team has the higher XG that match is how they'll decide the game. <laughs> Stop it, man. That's some, that's, <laughs> that's, some, that's, some, that's some crazy cap in my book. <laughs> What kind of nonsense is that? That's some crazy. Cap. Hey man, I, I've seen, cra- I've heard crazier things. That sounds like absolute nonsense. Sounds. <laughs> no, no, Can that's not, that's April Fools. Is it April Fools? So he's captain, <laughs> obviously. Well, always go to the left. So that, uh, that's a, a yeah, that's a joke. That's not can't be real. Okay, so he said cap. cap. I'm going April Fools, man. It has to be. There's no way. Okay, well since everyone's going cap, I'll just go f- fact because it. I'll have to make it a little bit different. April Fools, obviously not. Nah, come on, <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> I have to make it. I don't want everyone getting a point here. Come on, bro. That's right. weird, bro. Yeah, you be for real. You're feeling right. very considerate. Be for real. Right. Nah, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. You're not a, you're, Psych. You're not a. You're not a winner. <laughs> what a considerate guy. Okay. The team that won Euro '92 didn't even qualify for it. What team? Denmark. Where was it held? Um, I don't know, but not in Denmark. I know that for sure. Mm. They weren't host nation or anything. So Dan started us off. They didn't, didn't have to qualify. qualify. No, it's not. They didn't qualify at all. They didn't qualify, but they won it? Yep. 
I feel like this has to be true because it just doesn't make sense for it to be not be. Like it doesn't it, make sense it, to me. It doesn't make sense, but why would it, like you know what I mean? Mm. It's an interesting one. How, how would they win? Ex- exactly, I don't know. So, <laughs> so you think I'm so I'm telling the truth? Yeah, but because it, it's like legit, like not possible. It that just sounds it, like one of those things that has to be true. But how? Because like there must try to try to explain it. How? A team got disqualified. Okay, and mm-hmm. then yeah, Denmark were next up, so they didn't actually qualify. But due to a disqualification, they got put into the tournament and then ended up winning. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like a similar kind of thing. I'm thinking like a little DQ it, action. It, if that, like it, it just sounds like it wouldn't happen, so like why say it? So I'm gonna say true. I'm going true too. It just sounds like too good to not to not be true. What do you guys think? I think I agree with these folks. Real we'll true. Yeah, like these guys were saying. Like I felt like. Someone got like disqualified or whatever reason, like a team couldn't end up going, and for that reason, Denmark were next in line, and so they ended up. Why? Why Denmark. would a team get disqualified? I don't know. Some kind of corruption Gee, going on. Politics. Match politics. Have, have, have you ever? Politics. Have match you fixing. ever seen a team get disqualified for a major tournament before it starts? No, but this is Not this is this is ninety two or ninety seven. Ninety two. Ninety two. Weirder things have happened back then. Did you say fact? I said fact. So we're all fact. So we're all wrong. No, it's fact. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That was Why? a good one. Though. What happened? What, what uh, are the deeds? Yugoslavia got banned. Why? Uh, I don't know the exact reason, but they got banned and Denmark was next in line. It's crazy. I had a feeling, That's bro. interesting. And they won the tournament. Nice. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Shout out Laudra. Shout out Cup Football. <laughs> yeah. Laudra must have been there still. Proper Dan- Danish team, probably. Yep. Legendary side. You yeah, got yeah, Brian, Michael, yeah. Schmeichel. Michael. Brian, Michael, Schmeichel. Brian, Michael, Schmeichel. Sounds, what a like, team. sounds like it could actually John be a Jacob, player. Jacob, Jingle, Smith. What a team. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up. Savvy. Next up. All right. Uh-oh. What you got on that laptop there, bro? True or false? True or false? There is a Scottish team by the name of Dundee United that are undefeated against the Barcelona I'm going to say true. Oh, wait, it's you start. United undefeated against Barcelona. And they probably couldn't have played that many they times. They probably played them once. Four, no. Like a little friendly or something? No, four games, two oh, with zero. Four games. This is back in the day when Barca weren't good. I'm going to go cap. Because I feel like I've gone true every time. So I went true. I feel like these... Like a team like that, would, it just has a stupid style like that for yeah. sure. Uh, do you know the last time they played each other? Nope. E, these are some crazy follow up questions. You gotta uh, limit those. You gotta just go based off the fat, off the, mm. off the rip. Yeah, you can't ask Dundee too much questions. United. Dundee United. Dundee. The last time I remember Barca playing a Scottish team was Celtic in the Champions League. Scottish so. or Irish? Scottish. Scottish. Dundee Scottish. Damn. Dundee. This must have been probably back in like the medieval like times. 40s, bro, yeah. 50s before and we were, were probably born. Talented, 40s. And for whatever reason, nah, that was time ago. Had to be a long time ago. Not that long. No, I feel like this was like pre like 70s or something like that for whatever reason. And just for whatever reason, they somehow matched up against each other. Oh, it's pre pre 70s for sure. Whether it was like a like you wave a cup or whatever. And yeah, I'm gonna say that's I'm gonna say that's fact. I'm gonna say fact as well. Ooh. It is factos. Ah. Hey. So they played in uh, the UEFA Cup. Yeah. Quarterfinals, second leg, and all, both legs, obviously, um, in 1987. Oh, 80s. Okay. Interesting. That was the last time? Prior to that was a Fairs Cup in 1980. 1966. The Fair? What the heck? Fairs Cup. <laughs> two legs. <laughs> two legs for both. So. Interesting. And Dundee, Dundee saw the the result both all four times. Interesting. Shout out Dundee, bro. <laughs> <laughs> James. All right, so we got, actually got ourselves a cheeky little draw here between me, Dan, and Matthew. So I can't score any more points, obviously. Mm-hmm. But Dan and Matt, I'm can, looking at you, boy. Go four for four <laughs> here with their guesses. So they're the master cappers so far. <laughs> um, so obviously this weekend, right? Pretty big uh, game in the Bundesliga, right? So I remember Spion. 
And uh, what if I told you guys that it's actually been 3,641 days since Dortmund beat Bayern at the Allianz Arena? True. Right now, is that, that your your thing, your April Fool's thing? <coughs> the only thing. What, is it 3,042? Yeah, I, like I feel like he skewed maybe the. <laughs> yeah, the it could be like part. the number. I'm going to go true because he said that number quite fast, but I know that is a fact. It's, it's like it's, some it's been a long minute. time. It's been a minute. But 3,000 and what? How many days? 3,641. I know it's been a hot So minute. that's 10 years. That's fact. Because I think the last time they won was 2014. Was it? Something like that. When they had a good team. But no, was it 2014 or 2018? That's probably when they won the, the cup. When was it? 2014 I know or it's been a hot minute. Dortmund beat Bayern in the Super Cup in 2018. I remember that. I was there. Yeah, but it might not have been at Bayern's home. I don't know. No, it's fact. It's fact. It's fact. Obviously, I don't know the, the number of days, but it sounds accurate to me. Ten years. Fact? If you're skewing the dates, then that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of crazy. But <laughs> I'm gonna say fact. Well, fact, fact. I'm gonna say false for the win. You might lose. Survey says false for the win. It's true. Hey, uh, winner, Daniel. Too easy to be true. It's true. I could have skewed the number. Jeez. Maybe I should have skewed the number. Should have. Do you want me to give you like a, a better tiebreaker one over here? Mm. I got a tiebreaker. No, but you're in the tiebreaker. How? I won. He won, yeah. Yeah, I know, but like. <laughs> he bonus? Like, <laughs> you went four for four. <laughs> he was he's like, he's just going the opposite. Yeah. Into the bonus round. Kay. What do you got? Man City. No. Man United is not okay. did not have the highest attendance at Old Trafford. Huh? Mm. Man United, Man United brother. Has, what did you just say? Man United has not had, did not have, does not hold the highest attendance record at like their record match attendance. Yes. is not while they played held there by Man United. It's not held by Man United at the Old Trafford like attendance record. Yeah. So, oh, so the attendance at the Old Trafford is not held by the Manchester United yes. fan base. Yes, I'll go true. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I'll go. I'll go true. Is not or is? Is not. Is not held. I'll go true as well. You guys all went true. Uh, well, I mean, well, I'm okay. Gonna, well, the only Champions League final I know that was at Old Trafford was 2003, which was Juventus was AC Milan. Unless you're saying that's the record attendance. No, it can also be a, a cricket game. No, not cricket game. It can be like a football game. Is it, it can be any sport. Any, sport. Oh, any sport? Any sport. I'm saying it was either like some kind of charity match, either like like a final game or like an extra or like a different sport or like even a concert. I feel like for whatever reason. Nah. So what are you guys saying? I'm going to say a different team held, held, holds that record. Different team? Yeah, yeah. The fact that you brought it up, I'm going to say um, it's True. True. Okay, so you're, did you say? Yeah, I'm going true. So it was actually false. Oh, I couldn't find the teams exactly, but it was a uh, semifinals for the FA Cup, Let's and go. it didn't have United in it at all. Jeez, Wait, we we literally so, just so said we're true. right. Yeah, no, I said you're true. No, you said you said you wrong. Okay, no, no, he's saying uh, no. I said what? We no, said I said I said you're wrong. Old, it's not United. Yeah, that's what exactly yeah, you said. So our answers are true. Yeah, your answers are true. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sick. Thanks. It was just a, oh. it was just a whatever bonus one. I got a cheeky one too. Yeah. So Jude Bellingham, you know, <laughs> golden boy, future uh, Ballon d'Or winner for this upcoming upcoming season, some might say, playing uh, his best football right now, Madrid, only has two more GA than Philip Walter Foden. Two more this GA. Season? The season as of now. Factor yes. Cap. That's fact. <laughs> I'm gonna say fact just to hate. That's fact. Because I'm a hater. <laughs> so he has two more GA. Then Philip Walter Foden. Phil like Walter. I feel like it might be the other way around. No. You think Foden has more uh, GA? Yeah, Foden has a lot. I'm pretty no. sure he's double digits. Jude has more. But just because of his goals, too. How many goals is... Do you guys... I'm not asking Matt here. Do you guys know how many goals Jude has? I don't think you can ask us these questions in the follow-up. You just got to go off. I'm not asking him. I'm asking you guys. If you guys yeah, know. You literally asked, you said you're not asking anyone. You're asking us. I'm not asking him. I said the question asker. Yeah. We don't know. Well, Foden has like what sixteen goals, I think. I don't think well, so. Well, obviously no. we don't know. That's why if Foden has sixteen, maybe it was like twelve. If actually. Foden has sixteen goals, I can tell you Bellingham has more. It was double digits. That's all I know. I, I said GA, not just goals. Yeah, I know, I know, because I think he's also close double digits in assists as well. I'm gonna say false. I said true. I'm a hater. Well, true. I'm true. gonna go true. It would probably be a lot more, but Bellingham might not miss some time, or else it'd be way more than two. 
So it is true. So Belling has 30 GA, Foden has 28. I will thunk it, I guess. Boom. Tough. <laughs> yeah. Just get some water here. Chris's yeah. Dukes. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that the biggest capper on the on the pod couldn't guess other people's lies. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. I just try to be different. Gotta try to, I overthink it. Or being wrong. Yeah. I just overthink things. Okay, Pep. All right, Pep. Dally, dally, dally. <laughs> okay. We know the international break just finished off uh, this past week. Not this past week, the weekend before we were off. We were actually at the uh, Italy Ecuador game that weekend. So if you guys didn't catch any of those highlights, check our Instagram channel. We got some photos, some street interviews, some some people you guys might find f- a little bit familiar in, in the in the account in the Italian uh, Italian space in in New York and stuff. But uh, it was a good time. It was fun. Two um, nil win by Italy. Not convincing. Not at all. Not convincing. Um, but it was a great time. Some may say David got burnt from just the heat. That's crazy. Yeah, he How so. much degrees was it? <laughs> uh, it wasn't that hot. It wasn't that hot, but over yeah. under five degrees Celsius. Like nine. I got I got sick because I was in the shade. Oh, really? Taking yeah. the taking the pics, so I got like pretty sick because like I was also like back and forth between like the the temperature too. I was like in the sa- shade. Oh, okay. It was pretty okay. cold, and the sun was pretty hot. hot in the sun. So these guys were sitting in the sun. These guys are boiling for sure. Chris was in the in the in the shade yeah. outside. And I gave away my jacket to my girlfriend, <laughs> who was in the sun. That's, that was freezing. That's crazy. Because I was in the the press box or well, press bench, I guess. It is. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was a great international break. But my question to you is that a lot of players have come out talking about their uh, their really their their decisions when it came down to representing their country. And of course, some of them may be friendly. Some of them are obviously more in, in a high stakes kind of game. If it isn't a qualifier leading up to qualify or whatever it is, and obviously leading up to the competitions in the summer, Euros, Copa America. What are your guys' takes in players really saying yes or no to the national team, especially now in the in this time of the season where it comes down to like crunch time with Ch- Champions League obviously finalizing up, leagues finalizing, and obviously even players just injuries and obviously overuse, and even especially just younger players in general. We obviously see Yamal, and obviously we saw Pedri last season playing an abundance of games. Is it right for players to say yes or no when it comes time for, for international break and it comes time to represent their country? I mean, yeah, players definitely should have the power over whether they play or not for their international country. Like, we saw a few of the English guys back out. Like, Ben White was vocal about not wanting to be picked for England. We saw Harry Kane getting injured, not being able to play his games for England. We saw Saka as well, injured, not wanting to play. And it makes sense because at this point in the season, like it's crunch time, like you said, and the league is the priority, right? And the thing is too, like your club team pays you, not necessarily your national team. And like, especially with like the smaller national teams, like I know, I think uh, one of the Jamaican players were complaining. Leon Bailey. Leon Leon Bailey. He was saying like, oh, like we only get like one jersey or something like that. Like they're not paying us at all. And like, there's like a lot of corruption when it comes down to these smaller national teams and it makes sense why these players don't want to play for them, right? Because not getting paid, not getting, like, the proper supplies, kits, whatever, and clearly F- more corruption inside, too. The facilities yeah. are not the best, too, right? So it makes sense why players don't want to represent their national team at times because, obviously, like, club football is more important for them, right? Uh, I think that's just an English thing. Uh, I don't know. No, Smaller countries... So. Definitely no, see that problem. I think that's just an English thing. Nah. Like you mentioned Ben White. You mentioned a couple English guys. You mentioned Leon Bailey. Who plays in England. He's English. He's raised in England. Might might be born too. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. But you ask any other player, would they rather play for their national team or club? Like if they could only do one for the rest of their life. I think any other nation would choose their national team. It's tough, man. It's tough. Unless no. you're English. Not no. Because really. English, they put such a heavy emphasis, you know, Premier League rivalries, top league, all that. But, like, play all the players I see love playing for their national team. Any Brazilian dreams, dies for that call-up. Players love going on international break. I don't I know. I think man. it's just the English that don't. That's my opinion. Nah, even, like, I've seen, like, a few, like, the African players complaining that, like, the FA for their country is just a mess, like, in terms of, like, politics and... Them not getting played or them not getting paid and just a bunch of other stuff that kind of piles up and just it's too much of a burden playing for their national team. I don't think when it comes down to it, obviously representing your country is obviously a great achievement in any footballer's career. Anyone in general would love to represent their country. 
money shouldn't really be the 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 problem there. I think the mo the 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 majority of it is literally just is it worthwhile? Am I, is it worth for me to present my nation when it isn't really important, or at the same time when the nation I'm, that I'm representing isn't really in the top fifty, top whatever ten of the rankings in the football? Where do I expect myself or see myself winning, holding up a trophy with this nation? Yes or no? When it comes down to representing a team that's in the top 20, top 30, like Brazil, for example, it's an honor because look at the players that have come out of there and actually have gone there and actually won something where you're expected and should be winning something. So if you're called up from for Brazil and as nationalist, and especially with the abundance of players that come out of that country, you're it's an honor in a way. Whereas sometimes where some of these other countries, it's kind of people's players' second nation because they couldn't make that first nation, France, a Spain, where we now see Ibrahim Diaz representing Morocco. But not to say that he can't lift a trophy from Morocco because look what they've done in the last couple of years. It's just, I feel like it's different. And for what Leon Bailey said too, like he, he just to go to Jamaica to see a couple of minutes, maybe hope to see some results, expect not much from the national team. But then you have to go to Aston Villa. You're getting paid to do your job there. You don't want to get injured. Because at the end of the day, that, that can also influence how the rest of your career can look like. Injuries can, can cause this. If you get a really bad injury and during the national break, sure, but you're not playing football anymore. You had to retire just to just for one friendly. Is it worth it? Not in my opinion, no. Yeah, even um, let's say like Leon Bailey or like as you guys were talking about, like the African teams, like they don't have facilities like these top teams have. So yeah, that's also also higher risk of injury because the recovery system isn't up to date or whatever. So them not wanting to play for their international team, especially when it's crunch time, like he's like Bailey, he's he's fight for top four right now. Mm-hmm. And he's been one of the best players in the Premier League this year. No cap. This is not April Fools. But uh <laughs> <Are> you sure? <laughs> but like I can see why they don't play for the national team at some point. So I'm I'm sure like they all want to play for the national team, but there's points where it's they have to make a decision on whether they go or not. And I think some of these English players made that decision. Because yes, they are all at, on top teams in the world, so you don't really see too many other national teams do it. But I mean, it makes what, sense. is it wrong for Ben White to say no, considering that what he came into this weekend was a high stakes game against Manchester City? If he would have got injured, same with Saka, even though Saka did absolutely nothing that game. <laughs> but you know, even uh, Harry Kane, we thought it was going to be a long term injury, but he literally had to go play a big game this weekend against Dortmund, end up losing. But there's there's yeah. big games, right? I, I get the angle. I get the perspective. Like, yeah, like the facilities aren't the best. It's crunch time in their seasons, but it's kind of snotty to me in a way. Like, oh, you only want to go and it's convenient to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, but if they're if they're missing like beginning of the season where nothing means anything, okay, then I see where the snottiness comes from. But this is like there's literally like what eight games left or. Seven games left, whatever it is. Like this is the end of the season now. Business end, bro. This is and and, this is, and he's going to go play friendlies. Like it's not like he's going to play like. So you think no? Leon Bailey, that was Nations League. Oh, like his was. Yeah, I'm his talking was about like the England yeah. players. Like those were friendlies. Okay, but for some of those guys, it's their debut. It's their chance to get into the mix for the Euros. Yeah. Like Kobe Mainu needed these friendlies, or he wouldn't have been in the squad for the Euros. Yeah. A player like Kobe Mainu can risk those 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 chances because yeah, even though he is a key player for United, he yet isn't really that consistent starter. He or Casimiro steps up and play the position. Even though I think uh, Mainu did start this weekend and played quite a couple minutes, but yeah. it's moments like those where these players can make their international debuts and get those minutes. But I can also see the perspective of some of these teams where. They need to get their best 11 out there in these friendlies to get them ready for their international tournaments that are coming up in the summer. Yeah, because you only have so many games as an international manager to get your team ready to go. You don't have training sessions every week like you do at the club level. I think the only argument you can make is maybe you just need to schedule it better. Like, should you be maybe having an international break this late into the season? Should you maybe just have a longer international break in the middle of the season or earlier on? In the season, and then you have the season ending a little bit earlier before the major tournament to have more times for the national teams to get together. I mean, I don't know. That's that's really the only thing I can think of that kind of allows that balance and allows for that quality of football to be protected on the international level. Because if this is just the beginning of it, because we always see this where it's one or two players that, oh, I'm not going to go to national duty for these friendlies. 
But then it's going to be more and more and more and more. And then it's going to be like the NBA when stars are resting games when it doesn't matter because, oh, playoffs are in two weeks. I don't want to go play a meaningless game now and get hurt and risk it for the playoffs. Right? So it's going it, to, it could come to that. So I think it, it cheeses me. Yeah, it cheeses me bare too. But like at the end of the day, like maybe they just need to restructure when these international breaks are being held. Because truly, if I'm a player that's playing for a team that's fighting for the title, fighting in Champions League, Am I gonna like? Sure, I'm. I'm. I'm obviously gonna be grateful that my country is considering calling me up. But am I gonna go play a friendly game that doesn't have much bearing on anything, and potentially get injured and risk missing my chance at playing in the Champions League, my chance at winning the Premier League? I don't know. Like that. That's that's a tough thing to call, right? But let's say, for example, if this is happening in December. And there's another international break in December. Or maybe there's an interna- international break at the end of May once everything's wrapped up. There is, though. But I'm saying a longer one where you have a little bit more time. For and it's the like the last yeah, one. Like, it's kind of like that last that's, hurrah. That's, but that's so late. Like you, like, you can't just have that. Why? The man, like these international managers, like you just have nothing to work with. Yeah, but if you have a longer, if anything, that might even be more beneficial. Because instead of having a week and a half before the Euros, before the Copa America, maybe you have three and a half weeks. You have an extra two weeks to actually be with that squad for a full complement of time. You have time to have training sessions every other day. You have more time with your full squad together. You've had now a full season to watch these players and you can make your final decision on who your best players are. You so know, maybe you can even bring a little bit of a larger roster at the beginning of the camp and make cuts. But then again, the isn't that more of an overload on the players? Like we're already seeing these guys play enough games don't you think adding in those extra weeks? I don't think to get so. Getting in like another game or two would it's, be a little too You're not much. adding extra weeks. You're just shifting where they're being held, right? So, so you're making it, some longer, but you're getting rid of some? Instead of having an international break now, let's say this week and a half or whatever it was that we had an international break now in the middle of at the end of March, why not shift that to the end of the season, tack that on to the time that's before these major tournaments, and have that being played then? Because realistically speaking, the friendlies that are being played are just for, you know, to get reps in for international, to make the money for the federations, this, that, and the other. That can still happen in June, end of May. The Nations, the CONCACAF Nations League, that didn't necessarily need to be played now. There's no real bearings on on that in terms of qualifications, right? Maybe the Can- the Canada game versus Trinidad, because I think that obviously had implications for who was going to the Copa America. But I think friendlies especially, you can have those shifted. I mean, even some of the games, I think qualifiers were for the Euros were this weekend, right? I mean, those games have to be played before, uh, like not even qualifiers. Which is which is why you can't pick and choose because some nations they have their friendlies. Yeah, I'm sorry. Some nations have their qualifiers they have to play. Some have friendlies. Some have friendlies. You can't. What if these qualifiers? Can't just pick and choose. What if these qualifiers were earlier on in the season? They are already all all year round, pretty much. No, I'm saying that these final ones, instead of being in March. Because in December, they could have had these qualifiers. Because you had that initial round of qualifiers that were done. Was there any European qualifiers in uh, December? Or was it just friendlies for Europe? Or w- or wasn't it um, World Cup qualifiers? I'm pretty sure it was World Cup qualifiers. For what? For in December for Europe. No? I don't remember, to be honest. Well, World Cup was is so long away. They don't think... No, wouldn't you be able to restore? I don't know. Maybe, I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're just picking at straws here. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing out an idea that can maybe make things... More beneficial, but, but obviously maybe there's some like, flaws in my logic. For me, there's nothing I hate more when fans on Twitter or just in general are like, oh, don't play this player, international manager. No, no, don't give him minutes. We need him for my club. Like, international managers have jobs too. They need their players to perform. They, their jobs are on the line. What, they're not going to play the best players just because, like, when everyone's laugh, not laughing, when everyone's busting the Spanish gaffer for playing Yamal too much, playing Kubarsi. These guys have jobs, too. They need wins. So they're going to play the best available players. But well, then again, that's how Gabi injured his ACL or whatever. Okay, but that's not... He was playing extra. Yeah, but that's they not... They already the sp- qualified. There that's no not the Spain manager's problem. Yeah, that's not his problem. For picking him to start? Not no. his problem. Why? It's not his problem. You're picking the best available team. It's your job. But... The club doesn't matter to you. But There's end of the no day... big meaning behind the that, game. There was no so, reason to start. That's also Barca's problem because no. they're starting... They're that, starting more that comes down to the player as well because the player can easily say no. The player can do the same thing. Yeah, but Ben Ben White did. I guess. Some other players do. If you really care about your career. But then a Ben White, there's zero chance he's going to go to the Euro. (laughs) He's not a star player, though. Okay, but maybe he goes to these friendlies, has a couple good games, edges himself into the Euro squad. 
Now there's no chance. In what, what position? Right back. No, bench. You don't Walker think there's a few other guys ahead of him? Bench right back, maybe. Ben, ben, yeah, he bench been. center back. I don't know. Especially if they're running a three at the back. No, if he has two good, friendly games, great training under the gaffer, he's proven himself. But again, but now maybe, there's no chance. Maybe that's not his ambition. Maybe he doesn't want to succeed under the three Lions. Maybe he's that's more brutal. focused on Arsenal. It's because also his, in their heads, as, as Dan said before, these English players, or who someone said, one of you guys said it before, uh, they, they care more about the Premier League than, than winning a Euro. Like, Matty Cash said he's English. I know he's Polish, but like, he's English. He said it. He'd rather win the Premier League than win a Euro with Poland. Like, but him also, he's not uh, he's not fully Polish. No, that's what I'm saying. He's, so you really he does, has, like it's hard for him to resonate with the team. He's also like he has the English mentality. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm sure Ben White is he's, he's he almost won the league last year, and he sees this team winning the league. So he's it, it's snotty to me. It's bratty. It's, he just would no. I'm not saying I don't, I don't rate his intentions. I I, w- I fully would want every single player to go to this thing, but I understand the reasoning why they don't. And uh, they keep adding more games, like, stupidly. Your thing, I want to go back to it. Mm. So you're taking out weeks to add more weeks to certain ones? No. So instead of having these international breaks, just keep the league running instead of having these breaks, international breaks. But maybe keep yeah, a so month. taking out weeks. That's what I'm saying. But keep maybe in a month before the end of the tournament, before the end of this, before the tournaments begin to have, like, a full camp of just training okay. and yeah, maybe yeah. some so, friendlies. Yeah, so I was saying, yeah. So they're adding, they're making one, some of them longer, and then they're taking out, like, those friendly ones. But the other problem with that is that's how they kind of rotate the squad and to see, like, that's where they bring in new players to see how they gel with the squad and stuff in those random weeks because players go get in and out of form, like, random times during the season. So having those these random international weeks throughout the year helps with that and, and, and like, fulfill your team to the best of its ability at but, the Euro. But Sometimes you, those games are more for experimentation, yeah. right? But wouldn't you rather have the best 11 that ends off the season anyways? Yeah, but sometimes... Uh, For example... There's an Italy player that, that they just brought just because he was good with Italy, but he sucked at... Uh, remember uh, remember Giacarini? That guy, that guy wasn't that good. But for Italy, for some reason, he just played good. And yeah, they, but that, that, is no, doesn't, no. that doesn't matter when the international breaks are. Yes, because he experimented with them in one of those friendlies, and they, they realized... Yeah. You can still experiment yep. before the tournament. No. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Also, you proposed this, uh, like... Longer outstretch camp, yeah. Before the tournament, that's not that's not enough time. Like they play these friendlies or qualifiers in March, then it gives these international gaffers and the FA months to plan for this tournament. What are they planning? A couple for? Weeks what are they war. planning for? What do you mean? What are they planning? What are they for? planning? They're planning tactics. Most, they're planning of, the, most of the time, squad. most of the time, they're going and they're watching these players play. Exactly. They can still do that. No, I, I think they need time. Plus, there's always qualifiers somewhere at some point. I think the, quali- that's the why qualifiers they're called, is what makes it tricky. That's why yeah. they're called FIFA windows. Yes, it might yeah. not be qualifiers for everybody, but yeah. if there's qualifiers somewhere, other teams are on vacation, so you just give them friendlies. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that that's what makes it tricky is the qualifiers because I think those are definitely more more time sensitive. Do you think more gaffers internationally bring their style of football to the team, or do you think they kind of make it work with the players that they have available? A little bit of both. Uh, like, uh, like prime example. You th- would you say Vicente Bosco had the best yeah, I was gonna say. job ever because he could just go there, like play like Barcelona? His job, <laughs> just do what you do. Oh, you had nothing I was to gonna say that exactly. You know what I mean? Like, do do what you do. Like, all you have to do is probably just toss Casillas and Ramos in there, and that's all you had to do. And they, for the most part, don't really have to do much. Yeah, and Chabi. I mean, it, it probably seems that way, that way, right? But it definitely wasn't that easy. But for sure. But considering what you have to do with the rest, you don't really have to experiment with much. Con- yeah. Maybe, you know, Fabregas wasn't playing a more center role. He's playing a little bit more as a, a striker or whatever it was. But now, internationally, you see some players who play. I'm trying to think. There's definitely players who play a different role internationally than they do in their club football. I'm trying to think of one. I know there is one for sure. I'm just trying to remember. Wait, what did you say that again? There's definitely a player that plays differently for international football than they do for club football. Campbell. For example. Campbell from uh, Costa Rica. Joel Campbell? Okay, but no. <laughs> That guy was... Al- a, Al- Al- Alaba, Alaba, Alaba. Show. remember Alaba when he was playing CDM for, yeah, yeah, for yeah, Austria yeah. and then that's playing true. center back regularly, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you have that for a lot of nations, I think, where they'll have that one player that maybe plays a different role internationally they do for the club. But I think, with they your just, question before, I think that's really more so based on the team. Like, if a team has, I think, a lot of talent, the manager can maybe be a little bit more free-flowing and experimentative mm-hmm. of how they want to play. Like, let's say, for example, Germany, Nagelsmann was playing Havertz left back at one point. But if you're, let's say, coaching 
a smaller nation that maybe doesn't have that crazy influx of talent, you maybe need to resort more, okay, let's make sure we're defending well, we're not conceding easy goals, and see what we can get on the counter. I don't think, let's say, for example, the manager of Greece can go out and say, oh, we're going to go play Tiki Taka football and try to outpossess Spain or, out, or or beat Brazil in possession. Yeah, but do you uh, think... No, th- I think it's important for small nations to build a foundation because if you don't build a system, then you're not really going to be successful. Like, look, at, look at Greece in Euro 04. Defensive system. They didn't yeah. have a system. No, I'm really. saying exactly. Like, yeah, but they had a defensive system. So I think I'm saying like it depends on obviously the the quality of footballers that that nation has. So a lot of times I feel like the manager is just going to resort to playing a little bit more of a safe, secure, defensive style rather than maybe playing an attacking style. Like I'm sure that gaffer would love to go and play, you know, very attacking football, high press, high possession, high line. But they know, you know what? If we do that, maybe we're going to give ourselves not the best chance of winning the game. At the end of the day, international is all about giving yourself the best chance to make it through, qualify with a point, or maybe take it to penalties a lot of times. With the, we saw with Croatia, for example, right? They had talent in that squad, but a lot of times they sat back. They had maybe brief spells of possession, but they were mostly a defensive team, right? They wanted to go to penalties because they thought that was their best chance to win. So I think a lot of these gaffers, they, they want to go out there and play the style. It's going to give them the best chance to win. Would you ever see a team like Brazil change their formation ever? Formation or like style? Formation too. Down, they're prominent four three three kind of football. No, eh, kind of depends. Four two three one, like variation. Four three three ish, like different variations of like the same kind of formation, right? But nothing like too crazy, like no, like three at the back at least recently. Yeah, they obviously played that in the past, but well, even for Italy too, three at the back is their thing. Yeah, I think it really depends, like on the players, the talent pool that nation has at the time, right? Like, let's say, for example, if you're going into a Brazil side that maybe they have, you know, no good wingers for whatever reason, which obviously is very rarely the case. That's the thing; it right? never happen. They always have a lot of wingers, which yeah. is they're almost like forced into making sure they have that kind of wing play. But let's say, for example, they they were blessed with two or three fantastic strikers. Maybe not a lot of wingers. Maybe they look to play with a different style different players with Italy too. They always seem to have a plethora of, of fantastic center backs and good wing back. So I think the three back just almost naturally fits. Right. Which is why these international gaffers, they have such a huge pool of different players. They need as much reps as possible throughout mm-hmm. the year to, to try things out, see what fits, see what works. Because let's say if you had that month camp before, you, you don't really have a chance to try different things. Yeah, not as much see time. how they work because, yeah. you know, you have you have November friendlies. Try this kind of style. Doesn't work? Okay. Try something else. Go to March. Yeah. This doesn't work? Okay. Boom. You're sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's tough. It's yeah. tough being an international manager, but I would love it, though. Yeah. What, managing international? 100%. You went last, bro. You went 2030. last. Canadian national team. Yeah, okay, bro. Yeah. Jason at the board. Yeah, okay, bro. <laughs> I, I'm here to go for like San Marino. Nah, I'd coach Canada. Nah, you got to start small first, bro. Canada. Nah, if you get San Marino their first win. Their first win. I think they have a dub. No, no, they don't. I don't think they do. They have a draw. They did, they no, they have a draw. They had a draw recently. They got a point. Okay. I'll give you every dollar in my bank account if you could get San Marino a dub. Easy. <laughs> Just takes one corner. All right, easier yep. said than done, bro. But like, how to get three goals against you? Though. Not happening. Park the bus. <laughs> I don't know, bro. All right, let's uh, let's transition into some club football now. Um, the biggest, uh, one of the bigger games this weekend, uh, the fight for the title right now, Premier League, City versus Arsenal. What a game! Oh. What a matchup! Zero zero stalemate. That's what happens when you have like two nerds going up against each other, trying to you know play their own style and just trying to be conservative with it, and two chess really players doing much with it, right? Two chess players at the helm. <laughs> Makes me sick. I hate it. Honestly, Arsenal was going for the draw. They didn't care to both win. Both of game. them, man. Like, no, no, they City were was, not into it. City was, had the ball like ninety percent of the game. But they, what were they doing with it? Yeah, because Arsenal was, had their whole team in the box. Like Arsenal, I get though. Like they they don't think they could beat Man City, I guess. So they just go for the draw, and, and I, I'm guessing that's also why Ben White had to be a peak performance. <laughs> Arteta told him, you yeah, can't go. I need, go. You. I need you peak concentration <laughs> levels to defend Holland all game. <laughs> Holland did nothing. That's another guy that did nothing. He he, in, yeah, what are you going to do? The whole team's in the box. And Gabriel's that, back pocket, bro. Uh, what were some of the pundits saying after the game? I think it was um, Carragher. Not Carragher. What's the other one? 
Neville? Keen. Keen. Um, Haaland isn't a creative striker where he can't, like, assist with, like, the space that he has. It's He's more direct, like, just go for goal. Yeah. Instead of like he's looking for that assist, scorer. like pass to the midfielder, or the, the other player into the box. He's really just a goal scorer. No, he's not. He no, is. the thing is, he won't elevate your team if they're struggling. He'll play to that team's level. He can't. He can't do something on his own. He can't create. I know you say, "Oh yeah, he can." At Dortmund, he did, but this is not Dortmund. Yeah, maybe at Dortmund. What's the difference? But not so much at City. Completely different. Not different really. System, yes. He's not running behind the channels like he was at Dortmund. He wasn't running behind the channels. You know how? You know how? Like I kept talking about Pogba. This is what you're doing with Holland. I'm not. I'm just. I'm literally <laughs> just saying his style of play has changed. No, yeah, it's changed. It's not the same thing as Dortmund. His style he, exactly. He can't but change it, it, game it doesn't. It doesn't mean that he can't do it. It means the system is not allowing him to do it. Okay, so when I said that for Pogba, how can you? You literally that? never said that. Oh, about Pogba. I never said that. Okay, yeah. Did he yeah. say that about Pogba? I don't know. When I said when I said they're playing at CDM instead of playing him in his actual position, maybe they played, Pogba, they played Pogba all over the place. Oh, okay. He, uh, Holland's playing uh, the same position. There we go. The he's still playing. He's still playing striker. Is he not? Okay, different system though. Yeah, different system. It doesn't mean he can't do it. Yeah, you just said he can't create he chances. Can't create, he can. The system doesn't allow him to create Has chances. Has he created anything this year? The system doesn't allow him to create See, chances. So he's not doing it. You saying that makes me sick. Yeah, Why? Me too. Because just do it. Yeah, <laughs> just do it. No Nike, bro. So what's he gonna do? If, if Pep's telling him wait in the box for De Bruyne to cross you the ball or to put a through ball in for you, and then all of a sudden now he's dropping to collect the ball, what's he, he gonna can't. do? He can't. He it's, it's different football. The way he was playing with Dortmund was it's way different. They had fr- they, it was fr- it was a front three, and it was. Figure it out. Yeah, but the fact that that is even a thing makes me sick. Yeah, it's not his fault. No, I, yeah, I, I guess not. It's not his fault. Maybe, you know, maybe well, why doesn't he speak up? You can't, man. Dude, it's not his lack man, of ability. He's probably seen the, yeah. he's probably played in the, in the, in the box with, with Dorman. He's probably tired of just waiting in the box. He's yeah. Why like, does he just say, F it, I'll do it myself for once? What's he going to do? Yeah, why is he? Why does create? he be a man? Yeah, what's he gonna do? That ball. Great to who? Who else is gonna score in that? He team? can't, man. Where's okay, he gonna why go? Why doesn't he go collect the ball and dribble? <laughs> he can't. Collect the ball and dribble where? The whole team's in the box. The whole yeah, team's in the box. See, this is what about versus other teams. No, but versus like who he scores against? This is why you're uh, talking about a guy who just broke the goal record in the Premier League last season. I'm talking about now. The problem. Yeah, the pro- but did that do anything for anyone? He didn't win the ball. Like no it's one of those yeah. things where like no one cared. No one cares. Yeah. Which is pretty <laughs> crazy. It's crazy, but which is you'll never see El Clasico be a stalemate. I feel like what there, mean? there's definitely been one. I've never seen it because in that kind of game, it's built on magic. Yeah, Dino, Neymar, Messi, Kri, Rafinha. Vinny. Yeah, but Yamal. I feel like you can't compare. Eagle. You can't compare that you football compare to this. To the, no, yeah. but you can't compare but this why? football. To, they have the best players because both of these teams are ex, are. Playing defensively, especially Arsenal, bro. He, they're they're defending to win. That's a problem, dude. I saw I saw I saw I saw a tweet on Twitter. Obviously, um, someone said they're tired of this four center back nonsense. Both teams, eight center backs, were playing four center backs yeah. across the back. That was disgusting. Oh, I, to see. I hate seeing that so much, Two bro, nerds, when, bro. When I see <laughs> Vardil making crossing Vardil in balls back, and you have. Stones playing right back, CDM, oh, yeah, like Akanji, Kivior playing left back, and you have Ben White playing right back. Like I'm tired of this, man. Like I don't know. For me personally, like okay, Premier League, you know, highest standard of football. I don't know. I, I don't know. Before it used to be the most exciting league, but some of these bigger games in the Premier League lately have been snooze fests, man. They've been snooze fest. The like, Liverpool and, City game was really good. Liverpool, but that's, Liverpool that's Liverpool. Good football. Liverpool plays good football, and that's why I'm happy that Liverpool are winning the league. Liverpool are winning the league 100, percent and I'm happy that they're going to because they don't go and they don't play this defensive nonsense. They go out there and they attack every team that they're playing. Sure, they'll concede three, but they'll go score four, right? And I rate that 100 times more than watching a nil-nil tactical chess match where Ateta and Pep are just kind of because all shifting pawns all, all game. Although our yeah. all the Liverpool have, are in first and they kind of like. Not sneaked their way up there, but like no one's really been thinking they're like quietly, yeah. they're quietly up there. Yeah. I feel like Klopp at the same time has nothing to lose, or he's just going out there and playing his football rather than playing uh, against whatever Pep is playing, against whatever Arteta is playing. Go out there, play your football because Arteta and um, Pep are going to play what's best for what the team they're coming up against. Yeah, they're going out there and they think, okay, you know what? If I go out there and I play defensive, at least I'm not going to drop points. Like at least I'm not going to lose points to a rival. They're okay, okay. We both take one point from each other, mm-hmm. and then we we try again next week against other teams. Which, I don't know, I get it. It's like an effective strategy to make sure that both teams stay in the title race. 
That's kind of boring, man. Like I'd rather one of those two, one of those gaffers say, you know what, F it, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna attack, and we're gonna walk, we're gonna walk away with three points to make sure Arsenal have no chance, or to make sure City have no chance at the title. Instead of just saying, okay, we'll both take one point and we'll stay where we are in the standings, and and that's that. But that only benefited Liverpool. Yeah. And I'm sure Klopp was watching, just laughing, just thinking. Ah. I just hope Liverpool have a rightful successor for Klopp because if they don't, man, it might be back to banter for Liverpool Loki. They're going to have one year without one. No, they'll, no, they'll be good. They'll, they'll have a good gaffer. Coming Dude, in. Saka played the worst football ever in that game. He was playing right back. Like lost. He was running around. Yeah. He was playing right back. And like there was no outlet going forward. Like It was not like he was available going out into, into play, looking for the space, yeah. making that run, especially for Vardio, who's playing like left mid yeah. for most of that game. Yeah. Like, Saka should have been behind him and hoping that he sits back and makes sure he keeps his eye on him because Vardil was free. He had the ball. He was just holding it, yeah. crossing it when he can. That's what Arteta wanted him to do, probably. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But, like, it's just at that point, like... And it's a shame, dude, because, man, a few weeks ago, we were talking about our, how Arsenal was scoring five, six goals a game. And I'm thinking, damn, this Arsenal is exciting to watch. I, I want to watch Arsenal go and score mm -hmm. five, six goals a game. And now I'm watching them sit here with ten guys in the box. Because these two nerds came up against each other, man. Tired, bro. I feel like Arsenal also don't have that player, though. Although everyone can say Saka this, Saka that, Havers this, Havers that. No, he's not someone that's... that's the only players that came out there and actually did something, I feel like Wander step up and do something, were when Martinelli and Trussard came on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gabriel Jesus did his thing when, when he got the ball, I feel. A little bit, but at the same time, he, he, was, he was also playing... He was also dropping deep in the fence too. but when he got the ball, he did, like, try his best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bro, I just needed Jesus to score so I could hear some epic Peter Drury commentary. Yeah. yeah. And it's Jesus who's risen on Christmas to give us another name. Easter. Easter. Oh, Easter. Oh, my Easter. God. <laughs> Christmas. See, this is why no one cares that City have won, like, four leagues in the last five years. Because they don't, none of those leagues made you feel anything. The only Even the Centurion season? No one nah. cared. The only City one that made me feel something was the Aguero. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's when it mattered. Yeah. yeah. And that was exciting. No, it, was. Now, it came down to the last day. Yeah. yeah, now nobody cares. But you can say that about any any team. Nah, nah. No, nah, people care about like Madrid dominating the CL. You cared when Liverpool won the, the league? It hit different. Yeah, it, was, like it, it was, was different. different. Come on, bro. It hit different. Come on, bro. But I there's always going to be the dominant team, though, once in a while. Like before it was United that dominated. Yeah, but they weren't winning leagues in like January. I mean... Well, neither is City these so, yeah, past two not, years. Right. Yeah, but it's there's like an inevitableness with them that's boring. I don't know, man. You think it's inevitable? Yeah, they've won four in the last five. This season, you think it's coming? Yeah, they're still probably going to win. Nah, bro. It's Arsenal yeah, or That's what bro. you think. Watch. Arsenal well, or Liverpool. Like, what? City have 64. Arsenal, I think, are sat on 65. Liverpool are on 67. Yeah. They've all played the same amount of games, right? So Liverpool right now are obviously <laughs> the favorites. And I think one thing that worth mentioning, too, is Arsenal and City both also have Champions League to, to worry about. Liverpool obviously still have Europa Liverpool, League, yeah. but you're probably maybe not getting a crazy, crazy strong team. Like, Arsenal have to go and worry about facing Bayern. City needs to go and worry about facing Madrid, right? And at the end of the day, like, whether you like it or not, if you're City, you need to perform in Champions League. The league's one thing, but City's main goal is still Champions League, mm. I think. Even even their CL win, did anyone really care? They they weren't the better team in that final. So, bro, it's so easy to say that as not being a City fan. No, okay, why would you care if another okay. team that's not your own wins a trophy? Yeah, okay. Obviously, City fans cared, but like, well, why would you or I care if we don't support? Like, City? I was watching a video the other day. <laughs> I think it was the kickoff. They were ranking the top ten. Premier League clubs. Of all time? Yeah. And Mans were debating, like, putting Spurs over Man City. Like, putting Arsenal above Man City. No. Chelsea above Man City. But what does anyone else's opinion really mean? Even our okay. own. Okay. <laughs> okay, when you put it like that. <laughs> why am I even talking right now? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, bro. I just won't say any more words. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying, bro. I'm done talking. I'm just. You saying. won't hear any words out of me, audio listeners. No, you, you can won't speak. hear anything else out of me. I'm done talking. Anyone could speak, but does it really matter? That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a. I want to go back onto the thing of Holland because I feel like we, this 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 thing that I saw is going to kind of make us debate a little bit, and I feel like we debated about this a little bit. Uh, we always have that debate about. 
our players this generation, as good as the last generation, we always say no. They lost a lot of talent. But George Best had a quote from back in the day that just came up. With, I think Copa 90 posted it. it. says, I don't recognize myself in any of these players I see today. So today was obviously back in the day when he was around. There's only a one who excites me, and that player was Thierry Henry. So he didn't rate any of the players of that generation. So do we kind of overrate that generation a little bit when we're comparing it to this generation? Because he's talking about that generation that no. we compared to. I think we've all said it before that th- that generation and that era was had always had the best players compared to now. No, George Best is saying that that era is not as good as his era. Which era? The like George Best's era. Like he's saying George Best's era is way better than Terry. It could have been. Could've I feel like I feel like it's kind of fallen off a year after year. The quality has changed where it's been more as we speak all the time. It's really just um, what do we say? It's very just you play your role and you, you, it's role based football rather than you know the creativity where players can stand out because of the uniqueness or the individuality that comes out of players. Nowadays, if you're not playing a specific style of football that's expected from you as a, from a manager or from your position, then you're useless. Where, you know, back in 06, you saw those tons of talent compared to now. You're seeing just decade after decade of football just changing. And players just become more just stats and numbers besides actual individuality. Yeah. You know, you can find the same player playing for you in a different club just because of their numbers. And you see some of those players, all those teams now, just buy players because of their numbers. Moneyball, yeah. Brayden, I think, are uh, the whole Brayden kind of sports group. Brayden, Union St. Joa, they're all based on just statistics. Like, they're looking at, based Jersey on these well. statistics, what player is going to be able to replace my player like for like, essentially. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like, it's been working. Like, if, yeah. you're, if you're seeing some of these teams, like Union St. Joa specifically, like, it seems like every year they're selling someone for 20, 30 million, but they have some random player that no one's ever heard of come in. And the next thing you know, they're being sold for 20, 30 million the next season because they were able to go in and reproduce year after year after year, which honestly it's effective. It's and in some cases it's, it's interesting because I think it also gives maybe some players a chance based off just the statistics. Like let's say for example, if a player is coming from a league that maybe isn't heavily scouted, mm-hmm. but now one of these teams that are relying on statistics are saying, Oh, you know what? This player here is kind of, a fit for what we're looking for in this position. Maybe now there's more players that are getting opportunities just based off of these statistical models. We'd love to know how they get these statistics from like these random countries. Well, I just, know you got to send a scout there. No, but, like, but GA maybe, um, you know, speed, your time you're clocking in, yeah, I guess. minutes played. There's a lot of data, I think. Yeah, a lot of data can be collected right? for sure. I think what you're saying about George Bess is I think people or players in general just kind of prefer – what they're familiar with, Their what era. they've experienced, yeah. right? Because, like, his era, bro, they were smashing birds, drinking pints, <laughs> yeah. and going to the football the next day, bro. Like, players aren't... Are they doing that now? Yeah. Maybe. Be. Maybe not as much as they were before, but different kind of era, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. Like, are, do we underrate our era a little bit just because of the past, like, our Nostalgia. our memories of all these players? But, like... Nah. But why? Because nah, statist- it could be the same thing. Statistically, our era is good, but... It's just, it's nerdy to me. It's not the game. Like, you, you watch the game. You don't watch the, the box score, you know? Like, you look at statistics in that old era. Like, sure, Zidane's GA isn't great. Like, Dani Alves has more career assists. Like, Figo's GA, it's not great. Yes, the GA, it's like, not great. Like, Pablo yeah. Nedved's GA, it's not great. But you're watching the game. Mm. You're not watching the box score. No, I, I, I agree with that. And I think oh, it, in, 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 that in some Blazing. aspects, I think it's maybe just how we're consuming the game now with social media, with all these different you know platforms that are just spitting stats at us. It's almost the way that we're consuming the game now that's changed. But the players themselves are probably more talented today than they were 15, 20, 30 years ago, almost indefinitely. I don't think so. If talented, you, maybe not necessarily. If you take a player from so. this era... Conditioning-wise, yes. And you put them into... 90s the 80s they're gonna dominate yeah no Can maybe really from an athletic though? standpoint no i think from not every a, standpoint no 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 athletics is part yes. of the game no yeah, for sure not not talent though i think they would talent not necessarily i think that they just kind of get like athletic they're gonna dominate. bro if you put a player from this era back in the day they'd be complaining oh the grass isn't even old oh, the ball isn't fully round like oh my cleats aren't no but we're talking grams. about like 20 years ago like yeah. 10 years ago yeah but even you, then you, you can, can still you say can that take a player from let's say the 70s 80s they might not last 20 30 minutes in today's game mm. too much running though. definitely but not. even then you could train that, me, you can example. train conditioning you can't train talent you can 
What's easier though? Dude, at the end of the day, there's players that aren't playing right now. They have the talent. They don't have the athleticism. But is that also due to the kind of role they played in their team and how that's kind of not necessarily a thing now? Exactly. So these players that have talent and would have been maybe some of the best players in that previous generation just based on talent alone, who didn't have athleticism, aren't playing now because they can't cut it with the athleticism. That's what he's trying to say. So would those yeah, talented players cut it right like now? Let's say someone like Samir Nasri, someone like Ozil, some of these players that were just oozing with talent but couldn't make it for a elongated career because of their athleticism, they would have dominated in the okay, 70s, the 80s, yeah, the 90s. It's the, it's the age-old debate. Like you can't you can't compare people from different eras. You you could compare what they did in their era, yeah, and then put those together. But no, it's it's a dead argument. But, but like I, athletics have just developed in general. But there's still talent. Like you throw Usain Bolt in the 1936 Olympics, he's yeah, gonna he's burn gonna, everybody. He's gonna burn everyone. But there's still talent in today's generation. I think it's just being overshadowed by how we're consuming the game. I wouldn't say there's any talent. There's like talent. Like dude. for example. A guy like Vinny Jr., great athlete. Yeah. Good goal scorer to an extent. He can't, he's not good at beating a man, like, based off pure talent. Yeah, he he's great at beating a man by speed. Yeah. You go back, there's more talented players that could beat a man by, by skill, by trickery, like a Raquel me. Slow, yeah. but he could beat a man. But, but nowadays, are those players that can beat a man with skill just not having the opportunity to play as much because they don't have the athleticism? No, I like think... I th There's plenty of players, dude, that play all, every single 10 from the last generation that isn't playing football anymore. Yeah. Even someone like Sancho, for example, yeah. oozing talent, goes to the Premier League because he doesn't have the athleticism, the pace and power, all of a sudden he's, he's washed, he's a scrub. Mm -hmm. But you see a player like him, he's oozing talent. He can beat a player one-on-one, -on -one, but because he doesn't have that, you know, 37, 38 kilometer an hour speed... He's not cutting it in today's game. It's also mentality too, no? Mentality, dude. You talk about the mentality in the 70s and 80s. You were just saying. They're out there smashing birds, uh, having pines, probably showing up to the game drunk. Yeah, but they... Still perform though. They, yeah, they would yeah. perform and they were confident. Yeah, but a player like that would go in and perform too. Eden Hazard. Hazard too. <laughs> like There are players say that were oozing with talent, but it's the because how the game has changed, they haven't had the same opportunities to go out there and show the talent. We talk no. about all the time how the games become too systematic, all about athleticism. The talent's still there, but I think a lot of these players are holding back their talent. I think football. Yeah, but it, it also is play. mentality, though. It is. Like, all these tens. Yeah. Yeah, their role is kind of diminished. The ten doesn't exist too much anymore, but why haven't any of them adapted? I think you're seeing it now with the advanced eight position, yeah, that kind have. of nine and a half, but it's taken time. There's still talent in these players, dude. But at the end of the day, if you're a player, your goal is to play every game, right? And if the coach, if you know the coach is going to bench you, if you're not tracking back, if you're not marking this player, if you're not pressing, you're going to go and you're going to do that. Even if that means not, you know, performing to the best of your abilities because you're, you have to defend, you have to track back. These players have talent, dude. But nowadays, no coach is really going out there and saying, go play. Like before, you used to have full teams where the coach would just say, go play. Every midfielder, they'd play two tens, they'd play their, their wingers. Everyone was just being creative. Nowadays, it's all just a system. If you're not tracking back, if you're not pressing your man, if you're not covering your guy, you're getting subbed out. No, you're right, and it's not right. <laughs> but the talent's still there. In, in a way, yeah. Yeah, they don't have the freedom to express themselves anymore. But can, can like, who could do a step over realistically? Who could do Every a rainbow? Single player. Who could do Every a single player. Who could <laughs> any, do a rainbow? Any player. Yeah, dude. I feel like players any can. Player. It just it just comes down to efficiency. And like you mentioned know, with Vinny man. Jr., I feel like Vinny Jr. does have that stuff in his pocket, but it just comes down to it. Am I going to do a skill move that may come off successfully and may, maybe beat the player with a rainbow? Sure, whatever it is. What if it doesn't come out successfully? Then I look bad, then I get counterattacked, and then they score. Or. Am I just going to use my speed to beat that player and do it the easier way, yeah. which he does? Just utilizing your strengths. Like, he could obviously beat a player by doing a step over or whatever. But realistically, though, is it fast? Nah, not always. More favorable to him. He's tried doing step overs. You act like he's just, like, kick and run past the player. He doesn't always do that. It's it's most of his formula. No. You can say the same no. about Mbappe, then. No, nah, Mbappe's is. got talent, though. So does no. Not as much as Mbappe. Obviously, but the same kind of dribbling output is there. 
No, in I terms just, of using the athleticism. I'm just comparing to like a Rodrigo. He's not athletic, but he can beat any man, no problem. Rodrigo's pretty athletic. Not as much as Vinny. He's still athletic, though. He can't run that fast. Okay. He's still a pretty quick player. Better he's not him. rapid like Vinny. Yeah, he's quick with his dribbling at his feet. That's talent. Okay. Being a quick dribbler at foot is talent. Okay. Not necessarily like Vinny can do the same thing. speed. Vinny can do the same thing. Uh, no, I can't do we, the same thing. We've seen thing. him do the same thing. Yeah. Vin- Rodrigo is better than Vinny, man. I'm okay. not. I'm not doubting that. That that's for Brazilians to debate. <laughs> Anyone can debate. Them. <laughs> but it comes down to the training. Players at a young level training those abilities, dribble past cone into tight spaces. If anything, Vinny has the talent to be where he is faster naturally. That's where the talent I feel like is where some players may grow up having more skill step overs because of the training they put on the pitch when it came down to the development stages. Whereas sure speed in the way you can still become faster as a player, but I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit more given to you speed power. Yeah. Like I feel like if we were to throw like a Riyad Mahrez into like, uh, like a, I don't know, some sort of era, like he would cook. Like we're talking, I'm talking about Lester Mars when he was beating players like nothing. Like that guy ha- was oozing talent too. Like we have, as what I'm trying to say is like we have these players. They just, he went to City and kind of got trapped in the, what he could do and what he can't do there. So certain players go to these bigger teams and they just kind of get trapped. They're not allowed to show their full potential. And yeah. I feel like a lot of those players do. Yeah, when Pocket Dog goes to City, it's going to be brutal. Yeah, he's going to get trapped. <laughs> he's little not going to be able to do any talented skills. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're excited for it, though. No, I'm not excited. I swear his guy, yeah, with this guy, his guy was going up. He's like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> 70 yeah, mil. For the yeah. fool, 70 for the mil. PR, but not for oh, okay, okay. 70 mil. Not for the actual brilliance. PR <laughs> is pretty good right now, too, low key. Yeah, it's, because it's, he's doing skills. And the dancing. <laughs> do you know that in. Uh, That's Pocket Dog. What was the year? I think in 2003. Quantemo Blanco was uh, top 10 most talented players in the world. Source? Huh? Source? I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. I made it up. Is this another April Fool? <laughs> no, it, no, it was. This is true. It's, it's, when, he, it's when he trapped bro. the ball with his feet and did a little say? jump. What do you. The trap the ball with the feet and then the hop? Yeah, <laughs> the Blanco that's, hop? That's talent, dude. When he played in the La Liga, he was top 10 most talented players in the world. Based Wait, is this like league? a stat? Yeah. I don't know how that could be a stat. Based on what? <laughs> huh? Based on what? Just talent. There was like a talent. He was measuring this. It was just oozing. How much? What's talent the talent oozing? measurement? Yeah. Ooze. I don't know. I think uh, camera who was first. But so you only remember ten. him. I think it was like ninth. You yeah. only remember him out of the top ten. He just snuck in. What kind top. of ranking is this, bro? Tony, man. I don't know, bro. Like, when Tomo Blank could do it any era. <laughs> he might be the most talented player I've ever seen. He had it, dude. No, a guy that could do it in any era is Pele. Hmm. Yes. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. I, I never seen Pelé play, besides bro. like highlights. But He's like, a freak athlete as well as an intel- talented footballer, bro. Yeah. But yeah, that guy I'm anywhere not, he performs. I'm not going to say yes or no. I never seen him play. Yeah. Pelé like, was cracking a sub 1100 meter in the 50s, oh, 60s. What? Sub 1100 meter. What's a sub 11? Under meter dash, under 11 meter dash. Oh. He's swift. So, like, like what's uh, the exact number? Do you know or no? No. It's like, it's like 10 something? And something's fast. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. He's ahead of his and time. He's short. Dude. He's ahead of his time. Yeah, he's five eight. Yeah. He's short. That yeah, fast. and he had like an NBA player like jumping reach. Yeah. Ahead Vertical. of his time, man. Yeah. That yeah. was just someone who was athletic in a league and time when people were just, just athletic. Yeah, talent. Yeah, but he had. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He was a player who was athletic, talented, and in, in an era where players were just yeah. like you said, drinking, smoking. Well, kind of like Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo, but like because more he's, talented. He, Ronaldo's a freak athlete. I don't know. What do you, what do you say? Yeah, like, okay, put, 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 put Ronaldo in that era. Because Ronaldo's a freak athlete with his jumping. His uh, speed. Well, what I'm talking about prime Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, speed. Yeah. Then his his dribbling ability before he got that, that thing that... His knee injury, yeah, probably. Knee injury or whatever it was. When he stopped dribbling. Before, so when he was a dribbler, like, he was... The shit that he did was crazy. Shooting ability is insane. Heading ability insane. Like, he... That's also a freak athlete. Yeah, yeah. so no one's that increased. So then, yeah. is that another player that could do it every? No, I'm saying, is this well, yeah, play? like you throw Kyle Walker in the 50s, he's gonna dominate. That's just how it goes. So you're just going off older athletics players? develop. What were the parties like back then, though? <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> like you, th- like you throw a Sergio Dez. I know it had to bro. He's gonna <laughs> dominate. No, Sergio Dez. Yeah, no, no, I thought like, you were done with Sergio. No, he's, he's right because at the end of the day, like in the 50s, like 
dude, these guys are all these guys are just part time footballers. Yeah, you know what I mean? Realistically, yeah. They're, so they're, they're, they're at the paper mill during go- the day and then playing footy at night. So is the argument for or against Pele? That's what's the argument here? For Pele would still cook in today's era. Would he be the best player in the world if he played in today's era? No, hundred percent. Why no, no. Why wouldn't he? Because there's more athletic players in today's era than there was when Not he was just playing. An athlete, okay, okay, but let's say he played in. 2015, 2015. But, but like when, you, when Messi and Ronaldo were at their peak, <laughs> but like you be mentioned, the best in the world? No. probably 100. No, come on, bro. You be the goat. Y'all down, he's the goat. Y'all down, oh hey, bro. No, no, he, he's goaded for sure. But like, I don't know. Me personally, I, I gotta can't, tap in, bro. I gotta tap in maybe a little bit more. I gotta go back in time. I gotta hop in my time machine. Y'all, the, y'all gotta do your Googles, man. I, and uh, and then watch a couple more comps. I've seen all 1,023 Pele goals, every single one. <laughs> even the, the backyard one, ones. Even the ones from the backyard. <laughs> see. Miss. These Such are such a casual take. Even bro. the even the run up penalties. No. <laughs> U.S. take. My, my favorite casual take. Mm. There were no offsides then. <laughs> there was also uh, <laughs> what was there like the goal? You could pass it back to goalie and they could pick it up for uh, however long as they want. Yeah. Like they were stupid. Yeah. Ass. But that existed till the nineties. The Italians know, were st- notorious for that. I know Zola. They know. changed the rule because of Italy. Zola. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I love the. No, Italians. no, that's not why they changed the rule. Yeah, it was Zola. No, they changed the rule actually. Bring it back to the beginning of the pod. 92, Peter Schmeichel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about Schmeichel. He's the reason yeah, they yeah, changed yeah, the yeah. rule. Yeah, okay, you're right. Damn. At the Euro. He was just wasting his time wasting like crazy. He's wasting way too much time. Fair enough. Yeah, it's if pass. it's there, you got to use it, right? That's how they won the Euro. Yeah. And then they didn't even qualify. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. They qualified because they kept using that tactic. Yeah. Or tied every game. Yeah. That's a good argument. Let us know in the comments. Will yeah. Pele do it in today's game? Any era, bro. Any era. Any era. Matter, bro. He, he probably know. would. But I don't know if you'd be the best. Number best. 10, 9, 7, 11, bro. Anywhere, bro. Seven, no. Number 9, 10, 7, 11. Yeah. Nice it's flashes. factos. Fair enough. I rate it. It's factos, bro. Uh, let's move on to uh, the Y3 collab. Real Madrid. Fire. Fire. Bro, thoughts? Madrid always got some nice collabs. They had like one, like a bunch of years back with Y3 as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of sick collabs that we've seen over the years. What do you guys uh, say is your favorite? My favorite one? Because I remember all mines used to rock this. 2015, Madrid. The the Yoji Yamamoto Dragon Black oh, Madrid yeah, kit. Yeah. Yeah. What do you call it? You guys yeah. have one of those. The Gotze kit. Is it that one? No. Yeah, it no, 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 it's not no. Gotze. It was Felix or whatever. No, it's Gotze, but it, it was a blue kit. That was not kit. What? No, it was black. It the wasn't that kit. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It was like one of those kits they just gave to you for free. You guys had a black oh. one, though. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Well, yeah. this was the random guy's name. It wasn't. I'm telling you, it was not. No. no. Well, this is the Madrid kit with the dragon. <laughs> First player that comes to mind, Gareth Bale. Yes. Fair. Iconic kit. 100%. At the year that he sprint past. Golden collab. No. For me, I would say it would be Nike X Off White 2018. I think just a few months before the World Cup, they released a sick, sick collab. They had a, uh, like Mbappe had like his own kind of boot, I think it was like orange. I had like a white dot, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was Blue sick. Dot, orange they had dot. that sick uh, black and white kit. Uh, another sick, sick hoodie that they released as well. Like I was really messing with that, that collab back in the day. That almost looked like the logo was like the Holland logo. But that was, that was a more street collab rather than a football yeah. collab. Like it was football collab, but yeah. like it wasn't like used on the pitch. Maybe the boots, but the boots. No. besides yeah. that. Yeah, they had, like, socks and, like, more streetwear mm. stuff. But I don't know, that's my favorite. I like that one. Shout out, Virgil. What do you think I'm going to say? The Juventus Palace. Juventus Palace. Palace collab. No, nah, those ones are hard, bro. They that's are. probably my second, to they're, be honest. They're yeah. sick, man, with the orange and green. Those are hard, bro. Steve Colors. Yeah. That one came out of nowhere, too. Yeah. yeah and I, they I just stopped, too. They got to bring it back, no? We need more yeah, collabs. they've been shit. <laughs> I also like the, the, the Milan Off-White. I know you, yeah. you were saying it before in the chat. The Milan off fights actually really nice. I feel like anything with off fight kind of slaps, though. Yeah. They kind of never miss. Yeah. And how about you guys? Another yeah. cheeky one, though. PSG Ball Main. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, released yeah. that special edition kit. Yeah, black one. Yeah. Ball Main. It was clean. As Kendall Jenner was wearing it. Yeah. True. She made it pop. True, true. Proper. Iconic. For me personally, I got two. First one is the iconic. Probably one of the most iconic of all time. It's the Jay Zeno X Versace Italy collab <laughs> kit. That one's absolutely goaded. If you've seen him on TikTok, you've seen the kit. You know exactly what we're talking about. You're probably be in the DMs asking for it. But that's Yo, a goaded collab. But second for me 
is the Inter Miami and Bape collab. Mm. Oh, I think okay, that okay. one's neat. I think I think Miami have like a very very nice kind of color scheme. You know that pink, the black, the white goes very well together, and I think it resonates well with the Bape brand as well. I think with that kind of camo undertone to the kits is neat. It's something you can wear like literally anywhere. You know what I mean? You could wear it to pick up, but you could also wear it to the club after, all sweaty and shit. Pull up to the club and you're still gonna look good. <laughs> all sweaty and shit. You know what I mean? You got 40 at five and your boy's birthday at the club at yeah. nine. And yeah, yeah, you forgot to bring a change of clothes. Just rock the Inter Miami babe kit and you're good to go the whole day. Bounce ring at the Morning nine, Morning Yeah, and he's like, that's trippy. <laughs> Man, <laughs> the Italy Versace kit. You rate that, huh? <laughs> you got me messed yeah. up with that. Was that an man. official uh, drop? No. The one of one. One of one. Eh? One of one. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. I got the official look. How'd you get it, bro? Oh, Who talked to up? Johnny. Man. Versace. He talked to Johnny. Yeah, Gianni Gianni's at the villa. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, we had a little conversation. <laughs> With Ciao. Uh Yeah, the one we saw recently, we went to Puma, the AC Milan collaboration. I think of the brand's Pleasure or something. The one that I saw in the thing. Pleasure. Yeah, it's like it's like a the the, the design the AC Milan kit. I think it's their third kit. It's black, and it has more like a Roman church kind of look to it, which is that pretty cool. Neat. Yeah, I was gonna copy. That one's cool brother, too, but didn't deserve it. Eh? Didn't deserve it. No, that one's cool. That which other one's nice. cool? What was what was the one that we saw at the PSG store with uh, with Kang Kang at the back? That those are those are more like a collaborative. Um, that wasn't with any like artists or anything. Games, I think. That was just a one-off game. I think it's a preseason game. Oh, okay. I, was, I was gonna say that. Was no, I think so P- respectable. PSG PSG do a lot of collaborations with a lot of brands just because of the name itself and it's it's well branded team. Yeah. yeah, club, which I think is good because it's gonna help grow the game for, for sure. Them. It's gonna help grow their fan base as well from a fashion perspective, right? Because when you think of Paris, you think of fashion, right? So I think it's yeah. a good kind of way to help grow the brand but yeah there is some definitely some neat stuff there. well not PSG for anything story. psg alone and jordan is a good collaboration in its own huge. like yeah. they have a huge one together huge right it's probably the biggest one right yeah yeah another, another cool one that i actually liked i can't i don't know who the artist was but it kind of they went off with like a slightly retro kits like it looked like a kid drew them i don't know if you remember the uv one oh that was the the adidas and pharrell that was pharrell. Human, yeah. Race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. human race yeah, yeah. Human yeah. Race, yeah. Those, those ones like those at ones first clean, i bro. hated them they're underrated. But as they started, yeah. as I kept seeing them, like they, they went hard. on you. They yeah, on Juve you. got one. Bayern got one. United. 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 Arsenal. Madrid. Arsenal. Yeah. yeah, all the Adidas teams. Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah, 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 the Adidas Arsenal. Teams. yeah, I think they'll slap too. Those are proper, bro. Those are neat. Inter collabing with Monclizzi is pretty underrated. <laughs> yeah. They haven't dropped a kit yet, but they got the jacket. When they do, you it's going to hit. You see Simone on the touchline. Like, yeah. it's got the miniature Monclizzi logo. It's so classy. <laughs> I hate that Inter's doing all this nice stuff. They got to drop a kit. Yeah, yeah. When they, they drop, will, when they drop sure. a kit, it'll slap. They got to drop like a bubble kit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bubble kit will be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who else should collab though? What other brand? Yeah, like what's one collaboration you'd love to see in football? Huge. A team and a brand right now. Go. Huge collab. <laughs> I mean, we've kind of seen it already. Barca X OVO. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty huge. That's just the, vibe. Kind of yeah. That's just the like thing the is, so, yeah, it's just a logo. It's not like they like change. You need the, you need the full anyway. OVO, yeah. like full OVO, thing. full OVO Barca. Club. I would say, like, yeah, gold kits or something. No, yeah, <laughs> or like just the design change. <laughs> I would say, I would say literally like Gucci X AC Milan, like something like something that. related to that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Or who would you want? How about who? What team? What would you want for your team? Do you have any specific ones for Barca that you guys would want to see? I feel uh, with UV, I feel like uh, UV X. Uh, remember those drinks, Chubby? You're so dumb. What? UV what? X Chubby, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what? I kind of see the vision, bro. Low that'd key. be <laughs> low key for chubby. whatever reason. That'd be sick. I see the vision. That'd Are they still sick. in business? Like, like you just have like the different colored stripes as the chubby bottle. Low key. Yo, you're kind of cooking, bro. Low key. Don't gossip. That's it's, ridiculous. A, yo, it's, it's a good thing this guy's not in charge of absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> don't gossip. That's ridiculous. <laughs> nah, it's kind of hard, bro. That's horrific. That's no. The different colors and whatnot? Nah. The blue chubby right down the middle, though. That's horrific. That's the best flavor. You put like the bottle like on the jersey? Yeah, like the bottle like at here, but then like open the cap and it's like splashing out spraying up the I, I see the vision bro I see that that would mean a lot to you I mess with the vision bro yeah that would mean a lot to me if they got a chubby club this man's like a slurp juice Fortnite UV collab no for me realistically because I wear this brand a lot and it means a lot to me I would say Barca X Warren Lotus yeah yeah I go crazy I, I wear that brand all the time so it mean a lot to me I think like a Canada Goose X Canada would certain be team would be kind of crazy which team TFC yeah. 
Yeah, TFC. TFC. I think TFC has Very like cool. that kind of pull, even with OVO too. Like we saw the stuff they dropped with with the OVO stuff was neat. The TFC OVO stuff, Canada Goose. That'd be kind of cool, maybe. I just think that the team is just needs to have a bigger name yeah, yeah, behind that, it. That's that's the tricky. Like part. you can't just be. But it would make the most sense. Yeah, yeah in that term, right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Tommy Hilfiger should collab with someone. <laughs> or the Gap. You're just naming like just random one stuff. Just oh, what about Yeezy, bro? That guy, he doesn't care about anything anymore. He's done. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. Yeah, yeah, but like he's not. I don't think a team would take him. Why not? He's too controversial. Come on, bro. I disagree. Controversial. Don't do yay like that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. would do like a uh, champion's donor. You're such a goof. No, does, doesn't a men's league team already have that? April Fool's. No, a sick one would be like. <laughs> Krispy Kreme. No, Ikea X Malmo. Yeah, Ooh, sweet okay. little Swedish action. Yeah. Sure. yeah, that'd be fire. Or like, or like Dunkin' Donuts X, like LAFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or like uh, Joe's Pizza X, New York City. That's yeah, true. something that resonates with the city. I think Tim like, Hortons like X TFC. Yeah, 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 something with like city <laughs> no. related. <would> be cool. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> what well, little Timbit on the kit, bro? No. Timbit <laughs> soccer, be like Canada yeah. Goose. Yeah, yeah, Canada yeah. Goose. Yeah, I just need more brand based. Yeah, yeah, not like, not like a restaurant or like a soft drink. Burger King, uh, sponsored kits though. No, no, like yeah, a yeah. full-on sponsor, like a like hard, how, like a hard sponsor. They had, they had it right in the middle. No, no, not not a sponsor, like a full-on like collab sponsor. Oh. Like you have like a burger, Burger King X Hazard, bro. Like it's like fries with the names and numbers and stuff, you know. And then it has like <laughs> burger as the badge. That's but, like, insane. In you put way too much of, thought into this. Oh, let's say let's say Chelsea that like, the lines in the middle of the burger. You're yeah. good. And then the star. That'd be crazy. The stars could be like salt. I, I'm shocked no club has collabed the Supreme yet. Yeah. No. Ooh. No one's oh yeah, no one has. Sure? I feel like there there has been. Maybe there's not. I don't think Supreme is I don't know. They had a few footy things. Like I remember we were in that store. No, yeah, Supreme for sure. But you think you think it you think a team would like to collab with like a brand like Supreme? Yeah, I th- I think so. At the Inter end of the day, Miami nailed down babe. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, like I think a lot of these teams would probably even benefit too from, you know, working with some of these big streetwear brands. Especially as they're trying to penetrate that U.S. market, that North American market, where maybe some of these brands are already a little bit larger. Mm-hmm. Um, Supreme would be cool with honestly, just like any team. That go crazy. Nah, they already did, bro. Yeah. They linked up with Umbro in uh, 2022. But yeah, nice. It's they not re- a team. They released some footballs and jackets. Nice, not a team. Not a team, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they but they've had they've had interest in the market. Yeah, those though. go pretty crazy. They've had interest in the market. That, which those is, go which is crazy. Neat. Oh yeah, one of my buddies has a Supreme. Yeah. One of those. Oh yeah. The, ja- the one of the, a jersey actually a yeah, footy yeah, jersey. Yeah. It's not on there. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. yeah. I've seen that one. Well, let's finish it off with Harold the Kane. Harold the Jewelry The most Bayern. cursed is man in football, bro. His fault that Bayern Munich isn't winning this. Nah. Isn't going to win the Bundesliga. It's crazy, bro, because you have, like, the unstoppable force and Harry Kane and not winning trophies versus the immovable object in Kingsley Coleman and always winning a league title in every year that he's I played, guess, right? Yeah. Those two power. collide together, what's going to happen? Well, the world's going to end, bro. They're going to finish second place. We know what's going to happen. No, I'm, the I'm, world's going to end. I'm, I'm going to say my opinion here nice and quick. No need to waffle or anything. Harry Kane is an enigma. Essentially what that means is he's poor a lot. He's polarizing. He's a figure. He's a force to be reckoned with. And while that may mean great things for your football club, it can mean bad things too. And look. He puts up numbers. He puts up record-breaking statistics. But football is watched with your eyes, not on the stat sheet. How many times do I got to say it? So you don't watch the goals with your eyes? Not me, no. Yeah, because <laughs> you don't watch football. No, bro. because it's like Harry Kane's goals are only on the stat sheet. Man, what does that even mean? <laughs> you said you weren't going to waffle, bro. <laughs> this guy's yeah, captain. Is he there. winning his club games? Yeah. <laughs> How? They're not first. Still winning games. They're not mean? first, though. That okay. means, and they're notoriously always first. You know how hard it is to not win a trophy with Bayern Munich? The thing is, too, like, Bayern almost choked that last season if it weren't for Dortmund choking. But right? they didn't. <laughs> but the downfall was already kind of there. No. Yeah. They're not AC Milan. Like. Dude, at the end of the day, you can't compare them this season to last season when they spent, like, what, $180 million in the summer? Not more? At the end of the day, like, you're bringing in supposedly the best one of the best center backs in the world last year in Kim Min Jae. You're bringing in Harry Kane, who's supposedly the best striker in the world, better than Lewandowski, yada, yada, yada. Overrated. Right? And I told you guys from the jump. He's not overrated. I told y'all no, from the jump, he wasn't going to break the record. He's also not overrated. 
Told you off from the jump, he wasn't going to break the record. It's still possible, no? No. It's done. What are you talking about? When is the season's done? No, it's done. He's not breaking the record, brother. <laughs> what do you mean? I told you. How many more games are left? He's not breaking the record. Why? Well, first of all, he can't break Leondowski's record. Why? Because Leondowski's record was 41 goals in 29 games. Good luck doing that, brother. It's not happening. Why not? He can, because he, he he literally can't. What's he gonna do? Score? How many goals is he gonna score next game? But what's the league record though? Not about the 41. game. Forty-one. But how many games? Twenty-nine. Go- Twenty-nine games. Leon Dostoy scored forty-one goals in twenty-nine games. Yeah, but is that how many games are in the league? No. no. How many he games are in the league? Games. No, but how many games are in the league? Thirty-four. No, okay, so what's the league record? Forty-one it's goals. Forty-one. Okay. Yeah. Can that be broken? Not yeah. by Harry Kane. Really. Oh, like it's mathematically impossible? No, it's mathematically definitely possible. I'm just telling you it's not going to happen. Oh, uh, oh but he away. can, though. He can, yeah. He can do it. Is that he has 31 but goals but I'm telling you, in 27 matches. But I'm, but I'm telling you it's not going to happen. He can Wait, score so two hat tricks and one goal. Wait, so he has so. seven games to score 11 goals? He has. That's very doable. It's poss- yeah, it's a possible. It's not going to happen. What if it does? Then I was wrong. But. <laughs> okay, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless yeah. Chris asked his question. Yeah. I answered it. Um, if you Harry want, Kane's a problem. If you want my uh, if you want my opinion as the Bundesliga correspondent, I don't think Harry Kane's the problem, right? As, Tommy Turtles. As much as Ooh. I um, I don't like Harry Kane. He's a good player. I have a personal vendetta against Harry Kane because he's always doing me dirty. He's always scoring against my team. Um, so I just you know me not personally, not my kind of guy. But I do respect him as a footballer, right? He's a good player, good goal scorer. Good man. Um, but I think at the end of the day. At Bayern right now, the problem's a lot deeper than HK10 or 9, whatever he wears now. Anyway, um, the team, like, they just they just don't care. Um, I think in the Champions League, they'll definitely show a different face, but Tuchel just absolutely lost the plot, absolutely lost the whole locker room. Um, and no one wants to play for, for the team anymore. I think they also realize that the league's done. <laughs> He pretty much said in Tuchel the... Said, he said it he said, he said, congratulations, Leverkusen, the league's done. Yeah, he said it. We have no chance of, I of hate winning. I that, man. Which is crazy because mathematically it's not done. Um, realistically, it's done. But I don't know. At the end of the day, I think like Harry Kane is, is, a, is a good player, but um, I don't know if he's the right fit for Bayern in terms of what they need. I don't think he's the reason why they're losing, missing these these games and trophies and whatnot. But they could still go and win the Champions League. right? And then what? Then it'll, then it'll look sick. They're not going to, but... They could, um, but I don't think he's necessarily the problem. Um, I don't know. Okay. Scores a lot of tap-ins. Is Harry Kane going back to the Premier League? He, he should. After the season. He should. After this season. That would look worse on him. No, it will, but, like, <laughs> obviously. But will it happen? <laughs> to no. where, though? Honestly, like, it's probably best for all parties involved. Like, it'll be amazing for Bayern if they can somehow sell him for anything they paid close to him. Because it's not working, and, it, and they they're better off reinvesting that money somewhere else. Because Harry Kane's not that guy for Bayern. How can you? Sorry, how can you say it's not working though? It's not working. He's doing his job though. No? I mean, he's doing his job. The only outlier in this whole season is literally Leverkusen, who did not was no one expected that from him them to get literally this the results that they're getting every week by week. If it's not for Leverkusen, they're in first place. They've lost more games in Dortmund this season. Who? Bayern. Bayern, but they're on top. They're up still in second place. But they've lost more games in Dortmund. That's that's not Bayern. At the end of the day, I think they need to rebuild the squad. They need funds to do that. I don't think it makes sense to spend hundred million plus whatever wages he's getting on Harry Kane when he's not moving the needle. He's scoring goals, sure, but they were scoring just as many goals without him last season. It was just more distributed. He hasn't elevated them as a team, and that's what you want for a hundred million euro player. Do you not want that that kind of, kind of player to elevate your team, take them to the next level? But how is scoring thirty goals not elevating your team? It's not elevating your team. It's oh. just one player is scoring the majority of the goals. If anything, it's making your your team almost more predictable. Because <laughs> you have one guy scoring the goals, he's there tapping it in. He's so there, if it's so it predictable, how he's is he there done scoring it so often? the penalties? He's there scoring the penalties. He's there scoring the headers. He's there scoring the tap ins. But the rest of the team isn't on the same page. Like they're not as cohesive as a unit. When I think of Bayern and when I think of the Bayern that I feared watching, the whole team was shifting as a unit. Every player was playing, you know, one twos, they're playing together. They looked cohesive as a unit right now. It looks disjointed. It looks like you have a striker who just scares about scoring his own goals and getting his own statistics. And then players behind him who are like, okay, like they're not on the same page. So what about when Lewandowski was scoring 41 goals in 29 games? They were on the same page. Oh. The whole team was on the same page, dude. When you watch them play with Leon Dosky, 
and you watch them play with Harry Kane, do me a favor, watch them play and tell me it's not night and day. But who's that come down to at the end of the day? The gaffer, no? No. So <laughs> you throw How? Harry Kane onto Lewandowski's team. That team sucks or doesn't doesn't. I'm not do saying well. the team's not I'm not saying the team's gonna suck because I'm sure the team will still do well, but they're not as cohesive as a unit. That's down to the gaffer, no? No, man. How? A little bit. At least a little bit. How? I'm sure a little bit. And a a little, little bit, but at the end of the day. A lot of players are out of their prime, man. This it's the same team. Is it not the same team? No. <laughs> no. Is it not the same team? That's it's what? Not, but, but as a, a couple years ago. Players are out of their prime. Neuer's old. Mueller's not old. him anymore. Gretzka's Kimmich is, has done nothing all season. Gretzka is nowhere to be seen anymore. Yeah. The only players that's really been in their form, I don't know who. Sane Musiala, Sane Musiala, but like those are those well, are their newer ish signings. But these are players that are still playing now, and they were playing on that team when they won six trophies in a year. Those players are all key key figures on that team, as well, right? They're all, they're all still there. And at the end of the day, you still need the other six players to step up. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the striker almost looks like he's playing for himself. And I think at the end of the day, sometimes that's not how you're going to win trophies. And it was similar at Spurs. He was scoring the goals, but were they winning? Yeah, I can see what you mean. It, it does come off as top tier hating, but no, one hundred percent. It's respectable. I respect yeah. him as a player. He's a fantastic player. I just don't think he's the type of player that Bayern needs to be successful. No, I so just, who I, do they need? Give me a striker. If I had to pick like one striker who would fit well with their system, yeah, give me a striker. Um, honestly, like, um, I can give you a couple. Mm-hmm. I think um, Vlahovic would be one, um, because he's a kind of a bigger body. So, Vlahovic would elevate Doesn't Bayern ha- more than Harry Kane? Not himself, but I think you can do more with Vlahovic and have more money to spend on the rest of the team than you can with just a single Harry Kane. I think it's a better investment in the team because I think your output is going to be similar. Your results are probably going to be similar really? with a Vlahovic. What do you think about that? And I so- think uh, the Swedish lad too. From Sporting. Georgiades. Oh, that guy's talented. Oh, he's, he's, like, he's like 26. I thought he was younger. It doesn't matter. I think someone like that, like th- those are players, th- those to me are like a Bayern type signing. It's like they don't, the players are coming in, they have the talent, they can score goals, they're a bigger body, but they don't have like the ego or like that kind of, you know, immediate attention or ego of Harry Kane. When I think of those Bayern teams that were so successful, look at their strikers and tell me which, which one of those players had egos at that time. Manzukic never had an ego. Mario Gomez didn't have an ego. Luka Toni never had an ego. Klosa didn't have an ego. How does Kane have an ego? Didn't have an ego. Kane has an ego. Dude. He's the face oh. of Skechers, man. Dude, Kane has, <laughs> he, Kane has <laughs> an ego. I've never seen a player complain to the referee more than Harry Kane. Every Not single one player. Every single what about deci- a certain player on United. Every single decision, dude. He's there yapping at the referee. Every single one. He scored an offside goal. He's there at the referee. Nah, he's yapping at the He's not beating Bruno Fernandes, bro. On Dude, that. I've seen Bear players complain. He, but yeah. you can't you can't expect that to be the result. The reason why th- th- that Dortmund Bayern is not performing week in week but out. But if Kane's not providing out for output for his team, mm-hmm. how, how does he have seven assists? Can you blame him though as a striker right. to be asking for the ball, receiving that all those chances that he's getting though? He's doing his job. He's scoring goals. He's it's scoring not his goals. fault that the rest of the team is not stepping up, and their yeah, output like, is, is it poor. Harry Kane's fault that let's say the defense is leaking goals. No, it's the Lick's fault. But at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the day, Kim and Jay. Harry Kane scoring a lot of goals, but it's detrimental to the team. Dude, d- Byron were winning the games <laughs> with because or without on Harry paper, Kane. On, on paper, yeah. statistically, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. Yeah, I know. But at the end of the day, if you take Harry Kane out of this team and you had Chupo Moting starting, they're probably still in second place. I think your I argument know, is more like that's thirty eight less. No, I, th- I think I think James' argument is that the money spent on Kane can be used no, to revamp. It, it didn't elevate them as a team. The team that they were last season, plus the hundred million they spent on Harry Kane, they haven't gotten better as a team. So if Kane's is big, uh, like I'm not saying Harry Kane's the problem. I'm saying he didn't elevate the team. No, no, okay, I know, but like from this argument, is this the reason why England can't win anything? Because no, they, they've, they've been no. pretty far many times. No, I think the the argument isn't that England can't win either. I think England has all the facilities available to them. It's not about money. It's not about having players or no players. You literally have. The, some of the best footballers in the world playing for your team. I think just England are just unlucky. But besides Kane, what's the other outlier? It's Tuchel. I think I, 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 you can't blame Kane for what the results this season. You can't. He's doing his job. He's scoring goals. So like, it sounds like, a lot like the Ronaldo Juve situation. Like, is it Harry Kane's fault goals? that like Davies doesn't care this season? 
Yeah, the whole the whole, doesn't care. The whole this team, season. the whole team doesn't care this season. But I'm not saying it's Harry Kane's fault. I'm saying he didn't elevate them as a team. Yeah, that that, that that's that's, been, that's the argument. That's there. my argument. He didn't elevate them as a what team. if what if he wins in the Champions League? So what? What didn't elevate them as a team? <laughs> that, that wouldn't mean he elevated them. So versus what? <laughs> they, win the, it's they, won the cha- they won the. It's not easy to win the championship. They won the sixth couple like three or four seasons ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Okay. No, not a long. What's time different? Ago. The gaffer, ago. some players as yeah, well. Yeah, obviously things have changed, but I. What's don't... the main reasoning to the way a team plays? Usually the gaffer, no. Yeah, but you're you're saying Tuchel's not a good gaffer? No, he's mid. Nah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's overrated. He's a good gaffer, but at the end of the day, he didn't elevate them as a team. They had the same coach last year. Tuchel came in towards the end of the season last year in 2023. Last season, he came. Yeah, does he have a full season under his belt? Yeah, now he does. Full season. Yeah, when the season ends, yeah. yeah. But at the end year. of the day, he didn't elevate them as a team. Harry Kane. Tuchel didn't. You know, did Harry Kane didn't elevate know, them man. as a team, dude. Okay, so, but if... Wait, what if Bayern Munich come back to win the league? That'll be the craziest thing I've seen <laughs> in my in my time, right? And if Harry Kane goes and scores 50 goals, dude, I'll streak. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, okay, what do you what if, say? Seven games, you can still score 10 goals. Okay, what if what they... Do you what if they don't come back and win the league? Because that, that's kind of unlikely at this yeah. point. But what if they win the Champions League? Did he elevate it's the great. team? No. He's going to say, so what? <laughs> no, I, I still don't think he elevated the team. If he wins in the Champions League? I don't, I don't think he elevated the team. I think it's generational hating, bro. It's not generational <laughs> hating, dude. I'm not saying he's not a good player. James is here for their downfall. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm saying he didn't elevate them as a player. But well, you're saying that very, very, by saying he's not elevating if, the team. If he wins the Champions League, this means he elevated the team to be the best team in Europe. How do you know? Okay, wait, wait. wait. How wait, do you wait. Know? Here's, here's a good way to put it. Yeah. Can, can they win the Champions League without him? Can they win the Champions yeah. League without him? Yeah. With uh, Tuchel? Uh, yeah. Come on. They can't. Anything nah. can happen. It's Champions League. Okay, yeah. Everybody bro. knows that. Technically, yeah. Technically, bro. yeah. What's more likely, though? Winning with or without him? Yeah. Winning with him. Obviously, it pays to have a good striker. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't elevate them as a team versus last season, as he should. As he should. As a player that's worth $100 million should. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> He's doing his job. Tell me I'm wrong. Did he elevate them He's as a team? He's one guy on the team. Yeah. But did he elevate them as a team? It, 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 yeah, low-key. If, yeah, we're, he not? if we're paying attention to football like that St. Gallus team is, mm. then he's doing his job. Let's be real here. Quantamo Blanco Shut up, man. takes this <laughs> top 10 Bayern team to the next level. To the he, ele- he elevates them. April he Fools. Elevates them. April he, gets, he gets them a set okay, bro. Drop a final season prediction for Harry King. What happens at the end of the season? Final prediction here for Harry King. Bayern Munich finished second. Um, oh, Bayern, I'm readjusting myself here. Um, Harry Kane finishes with 39 goals in the season. Bayern finish second in the league. Bayern take out Arsenal in the Champions League, but then they lose to Madrid in the Champions League. Sends them packing. Um, Harry Kane returns to England in the summer. Plays for? Chelsea. No. Arsenal. It's got to be. No. Oh, Arsenal? Arsenal. He's going to go from Spurs to Arsenal? He's, an, he's, an, Arsenal he's an Arsenal fan, but going to the rival like Yelch. that? No. So Campbell did it. Arsenal. Arsenal, oh, baby. Arsenal. No, Sol Campbell at that time was huge. Arsenal need a nine. They're not going to win the league. They're going to go w- run it back one more season with Arteta. They're going to make a big statement signing. Harry Kane returns to England from Bayern. Bags packed to the Gunners. Bro, Arsenal getting Gyokeres or Osiman. They ain't getting Kane, bro. Boom. Way to stamp it. Stamp it. Dude, Kane, you guys asked, well, asked me my prediction. I gave my prediction. Done. I don't like it. That's the prediction. That's fine, dude. You don't have to like my prediction. What about yours? For Harry Kane? What if I didn't want to do one? <laughs> okay. Then don't. Well, I got Bayern losing to Arsenal in the UCL. I got Kane finishing on 35 goals in the league. Oh, I, I have 39. Damn. Jeez. Hey, Amen. Four goals in seven games yeah, for probably. the Harold Kane. Yeah. That's your goal. Not better than Lewandowski. They're facing Union Berlin, so that's four goals easier easily. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But <laughs> Harry Kane's staying in Germany for at least another year. I don't think another team is going to buy him. One, how much is he going to cost? Two, 80. is he going to leave when he's already signed that contract at Bayern? I don't know. Yeah. Bayern's going to lose the Champions League uh, final to Barca. Okay. <laughs> Barca City final, bro. Barca's not going to Barca Bayern. Bayern. They're going to get knocked Jeez. out by PSG. Harry Kane missing a <laughs> penalty as well. Jeez. Harry Kane doesn't miss He doesn't miss penalties. Yeah, he do- Are you guys insane? No. He missed at the World Cup against France. Sent them packing. <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> well, yeah, the penalty. 
That sent them packing. What, what's his What's his percentage though? <laughs> percentage doesn't matter if you sure miss it the, does. If you miss the penalty, so percentages don't matter. Not when you miss the penalty. Sure it does. He's all in one for the penalty though. Okay. When Dude. it matters most, he missed it. Still scores, Bruh. He's gonna miss the penalty against Barcelona. If Neymar was zero and th- if Neymar was one and thirty in penalty shots, but he scored the one that won them a Champions League. Does that make him a good penalty shooter? No, but he won. He won when it matters. But the argument is that he's a good penalty shooter. Nah, he missed it when it when it when it mattered. Okay. Well, Damn. I don't like losers. You heard it here first. And Harold second, Harold too. Kane. It's gonna get some packing. But yeah, thanks for tuning, everyone. With the YMCA, audio listeners, video watchers, and all the fans at home. Share, comment. Subscribe, share with a friend, a loved one, and you know who we are. The culture main. Thanks, gentlemen and ladies. Share with the fam, share with the boys, share with the crew. We love y'all. That we out. Cheers. Take care, guys.